So, Kat, our spooky gab, where we discuss anything horror-related that's happened to us recently, usually uh, is something the other one doesn't know, but this time we're both fresh from our subject. Yes, we are. Uh, hey, folks. We just spent the day filming a, a smallish part. Very small part. A cameo? What do you say? I've been calling it a cameo to my friends. Okay. A Boys and Ghouls cameo. A Boys and Ghouls cameo in a comedy horror movie. Mm-hmm. Like a 50s throwback. And it's called I Was a Teenage Wear Skunk. And we got the parts because of Boys and Ghouls, which is pretty exciting to both of us. If anybody would like to cameo in a low-budget comedy horror, just put up a podcast. <laughs> Do it for about three years. Do it for about three years. <laughs> really just send it out there and uh, see if somebody while writing the parts, had been listening to our podcast. Um, he'd been listening to our summer camp episode specifically. Yeah, because he's planning to do an 80s slasher. So he was like, I need to learn more about that. And he came across our summer camp episode and liked hearing us and thought we were fun and listened to more episodes and then was like, they'd be really fun for this thing I need to do for my Wear Skunk movie. And I was totally on board when I found out it was a movie within a movie. So the characters in this movie go to the movies And this is the movie they watch. And the movie they watch is called It Came From Uranus. And the butt jokes don't stop there. They do not stop. It's really all butt jokes. (laughs) All we've done, Kat, all day, is butt jokes. That's true. Yeah, Neil, Neil McLaughlin? I've been saying McLaughlin. Yeah, there it is. He told me today, he was like, you know, you don't know people's sense of humor. And he was like, when I sent this to you guys, I just wasn't sure if I was going to get in some enthusiasm from you. He's talking to me specifically. I'm a girl, you know, whatever. But it's, I mean, the script is all butt jokes and about lubing and putting something up my anus and... Uranus. Uranus. Uh-huh. And he was like, I just didn't know if I was going to, if you're going to get a, who do you think I am? I'm not doing that. And I was like, nope, that's that's exactly my sense of humor. <laughs> We're mm-hmm. playing a, a pair of scientists. Mm-hmm. A pair uh, of astronomers. A, a pair of astronomers. Even. Ass mm-hmm. astronomers. <laughs> Two very cheeky astronomers. ass astronomers. All the good puns occurred to us after we'd finished shooting on the way to our cars. Not all the puns. Some of them were used. True. But, but yes. But ass astronomy. Marshall, you have... Plenty of experience on movie sets and TV sets, but never quite so leading a role. Am I reaching, or is that That's correct. accurate? Whereas you are an actress, I'm not. But I do seem to fall into the occasional acting role, just because just living in Los Angeles and like knowing people who have projects, I've caught the eye of a couple people being like, yeah, just come out and say these words. It'll be fine. So now I've acted again, and this time my crutch... Or device in acting, what would you call how much I depended on my pipe? <laughs> I think I would just call that a safety blanket for you. But I think ideally, if you're doing acting well, you're moving past needing something and just using something that really adds to the role, which I would argue your pipe did. I felt it really did. It really did. There was no. I'm glad it made you more comfortable, but it was also very funny and you used it well. So. As a prop that I purchased several years ago for a Mad Men party, where everyone dresses up from the era of Mad Men, I purchased a pipe. And when I got this character, the stuffy scientist kind of guy, I was like, my pipe! I can use a pipe. And I even wrote back to Neil. I was like, sounds great. What's more is, I got a pipe. Yep. And he's like, pipe? Perfect. So when we're in the astronomy laboratory, I'll be holding my pipe. And then later when we're running from the alien... I'm still holding my pipe. That's like right. The pipe never leaves my left hand. <laughs> Except for once I transfer it to my right hand while I get a big glove of lube. Ew. Because that's the way this comedy goes. Which was actually hair gel. So every time I would accidentally get too much hair gel on my fingers, I would just put it in my hair. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. I didn't notice Because I had to sort of like fake touch it most of the time. This is because our set was literally made of cardboard. And that's what you get when you make a movie within a movie. If you're making a B-movie in a B-movie, you're getting a cardboard set, Mm -hmm. which looked like tons of fun when we walked in. There was like a cardboard telescope and like cardboard doodads and controls with Christmas lights under them. But you got a picture of us that was already put in black and white. Everything we do is going to be in black and white. Yeah. For this picture. It looks great. It does. It looks like, to me, not just the laboratory on an Ed Wood movie, but... The laboratory in Ed Wood, the movie. 
which for me is not just a compliment, but like a dream come true. Yeah. I got to say. Absolutely. Me too. Makes the first time that you've gotten together with a listener. Well, except for Neil. Neil McLaughlin, who contacted us to be in his movie, I Was a Teenage Wear Skunk, <laughs> which just premiered last week at the Vista Theater. Yeah. I was jazzed to be at the Vista Theater, if only because that's the movie theater in True Romance, <laughs> where Clarence goes to watch his Sonny Chiba films and he meets Alabama and it goes from there. And then you and I got to go see a movie we were in yeah, there. That was a real treat for, for me and yeah. you, I yeah. assume. I've been a part of projects that, you know, I saw later and I was like, oh, Jesus, I hope this never sees the light of day. <laughs> Even though you still learn something, you just have no control over how, what the finished product is going to be like. Judging from the scenes that you and I shot, I had it on good authority. It was going to be a lot of fun and funny because our scenes were funny. But, you you know, it came together so incredibly well. It's so funny. And he, he filled the theater with people oh, there yeah. to support him. And, and everyone was so, like, I mean, he got so many laughs and it, it looked good and it was really on tone for what he was trying to do as far as be satirical and also kind of accurate to those silly I was a teenage creature films. I mean, it was just, it was just like, what an experience. I've never seen myself on the big screen like that, let alone just part of something I'm super proud to be a part of, so... And as it becomes available for the public, I'm sure we'll mention it. But what was just great for us is that we weren't just there as Marshall and Cat; We were there as the Boys and Ghouls podcasters because that's how we were discovered. Mm -hmm. Neil was listening to our podcast while doing some rewrites. And when he decided he could use a guy and a gal for this movie within a movie during the, I guess, the post-production process, he thought of this. Our voices were in his head. So, hey, anybody else out there making a, uh, <laughs> a horror or horror comedy in the L.A. area likes the timber of this voice? Drop us a line. You were very good, Marshall. Thank you. You were very good. You had all the heavy dialogue. You had the funny sci-fi words. And you killed it. You were very funny. It was very good. And you got to slap me. and That got a big laugh. You got to be wonderful. Tell me I was being hysterical. Hysterics, yeah. Yeah. It was a good time. I'm so proud of it and so happy we got to do that.